All right, so I said I was going to eventually make a video on how to make a mold using MoldMax 60, which is a high temp silicone uh, material, which you can use to pour metal in. MoldMax 60 has a limit. Uh, I forget exactly what they show it as. I think it's 540 degrees, something like that. I'm going to be using zinc. Zinc I'm going to pour at about 800 degrees. Mold Max 60 does hold up pretty well to that temperature. Uh, they don't make a claim that it does, but, but it does. Now, you may not get as many pours per mold out of each one, but you'll get enough to uh, get the job done. Uh, here is the type of mold that I'm making. Uh, right now, I'm focusing on doing coins, uh, some type of a uh, low-cost giveaway uh, to give to my customers after they make a purchase, something like that, or just an advertising piece. I've got one with Stone Age artworks on the back side. Uh, I'm not sure how well that came out, but it's worth a try. If I had a 3D printer, I could probably do it like that, but lately it's everything's been old school for me. Let's get started. I'll show how to make that mold. First thing you want to do is obviously pick something to uh, make a mold of and that will determine the size of the block now you need the part and the way i do mine is to make a air channel out of a piece of wire i leave enough room for the sprue and little cuts for air uh, air escape to get into the tube so with that size in mind we need to make a frame and what I found that works really good are these Lego blocks so you get a couple of hundred of them should last for quite a while so you're going to end up making a frame using these Lego blocks Okay, so once you have your basic frame, you've got it sized what you want. You've got enough room to put everything in there. Then, next thing, we're going to roll out some non-hardening clay. And this is going to make put us into the first half of making this mold. Going to be constructed in two halves so we need to roll out about a quarter of an inch thick piece of this clay now this non-hardening clay is reusable and works quite well for this particular procedure All right, once you got a quarter inch laid out, I'm going to press this on here and make a little bit of an imprint. And then we will cut that out.
that block of clay on the inside. Now, what's hard to see is I didn't cut that quite so well. There's some gaps here, but we're going to press the clay towards the sides and close those gaps up so we don't get silicone running out of the mold or out of this frame box. These little tools, these are silicone um, clay working tools. Um, they come in all kinds of different shapes and sizes and stuff or whatever you need. Uh, these are really handy to have. And you just keep pressing all the way around the perimeter and seal up that gap. Okay, now what I'm doing here is I've got two pirate coins. I'm going to make a double-sided coin. So I'm going to have the skull on both sides. So one half will be on this side of the mold and the other half will be on the other one. What I'm going to do is position this where I need it, leaving enough room for my air channel and enough gap up here to make the sprue. And once I got it exactly where I want it, I'm going to press it down and that should seal up pretty nicely. And then we're going to press in our air channel and get it positioned. Hope you can see what I'm doing here. Now that is just a piece of number 10 ground wire. It's insulated. It's easy to bend and shape. And I think it's just the right size for what I need. So you can see here where it's going to end up looking like after that air channel is in and this is set up we cut little grooves in there for the air to escape as it's being poured all right and the next thing is to provide some witness uh, plugs that's just a, a place that i'm going to press down into the clay so that when the both halves are completed. They will lock in perfectly right where you need it. All right, so that's what that's going to be. Now I have to make room, put these in a location where they're not going to interfere with the sprue or any of the other cuts that I'm going to have to make. So I'm going to put one right here and here. here and there okay of course that's upside down the sprue will be up here on top all right so that actually is ready to be poured which is what we're going to do right now all right so in, when working with mold max 60 um, the very first thing you're going to want to do is to put on some gloves because this stuff, it will get on your hands and fingers and then you'll end up transferring it to other items around. So you really just want to uh, keep it off your fingers. Not only is this stuff a messy, but the hardener agent this has got to be the most viscous fluid I have ever come across. 
this stuff will splash and splatter and get on everything. You got to be real careful working with it. Um, so I'll show how to how I do it. Now, this is mixed by weight, and the proportion is 100 to 3. Now that's that's really hard to. You need a, a really nice scale that'll handle small increments uh, because that's pretty tight tolerance there. I have found, especially when working with pouring metal, that it's best to err on the side of too much hardener because it will help to make this set up faster and it will set up harder and it'll make the mold last longer. You'll get more pours out of it, I believe. The problem is they don't give you a whole bunch. They give you just enough to do what's in this container. Now this is a one pint container. It's got a wide mouth, which is good because you're gonna have to pour this out into a cup of mixing and if it was a small mouth, you'd have problems. So, like I said, the first thing you want to do is put these gloves on. Now, I have found, let me see if I can do this, a really easy way to put these on. You're going to like this. All right, so you wad them up, one in each hand, just like that. Put them both in one hand and then works every time okay all foolishness aside all right so we're going to pour what we need into this cup i am not going to show how it's measured out i have done this enough to know exactly how much i need for this Actually, what I also need to do is to build this frame up higher. So we do that. Okay. All right, so <clears throat> I'm gonna try and find a video that shows somebody mixing this stuff up and measuring it and all that it's kind of a pain but um, like I said once you've done it a few times and you know how much you need uh, I don't even bother weighing it out anymore um, one other thing you definitely need is a little uh, syringe type of deal to break out your hardener and also to squirt it into your your cup makes it a lot easier than trying to pour out of this thing. Okay, I've already poured a couple. I've made these two molds here so far out of this pint, and I've got plenty to make a, a third one and maybe a fourth. So, like I said, this stuff is kind of expensive, so you kind of want to get it right the first time and not make any mistakes. Um, one little trick I found that is I, if I come up short, if I don't get enough to, to fill this thing to the top where I want it, um, I've got some scrap pieces of silicone left over from the bottom of the cup and I can actually lay this in there, cover it over, and when it hardens You'll never know that that extra piece is in there, and that'll help conserve uh, some of your product there. All right. Another thing we have to do is you have to have these tonsil protector or probe things, whatever you would call it, popsicle sick. This will help to pour. Get this on camera yeah 
I know I'm in the way here. I'm not. But you'll get the idea. So once you judge how much you need, cut it off. Like I said, this stuff goes everywhere. Okay. That might come up a little short, so it's good to have the extra piece laying around. This stuff, it must be some super high dollar stuff because they really don't give you a whole lot. Okay, that's way too much. All right, and that's going to be just about right. So, like I said, we got to do this really slow because this stuff will splash if you get too energetic with your squeeze Alright, the next thing is to mix it, you have to mix it really, really, really well. And you may have to, they recommend you mix it for about two to three minutes. So, mix mixer up. Alright, you don't want to get too vigorous with it. You don't want to put a lot of air bubbles in there. You will get some bubbles in there. I have found that that's not really a problem. The bubbles will float to the top and pop all by themselves. The only time you might have an issue is if you get bubbles right up against your part. And... So far, I've not had that situation. I just, when you pour it, you pour really slow and you get a bit of a flow going and it, it seeps into all the little cracks and crevices on there. Uh, that's why the silicone is so good. It will actually get into the little cracks of the blocks. You'll see when you pull them apart and it, it really captures the details well and that's why we like to use it now sand casting and that sort of thing i mean you, it works and you get a shape and if you use a really really fine sand you can um, get pretty good detail but not like you're going to get with this stuff um, you're doing intricate coins and things with a lot of detail. Um, this is what you want to use to pick that up. Now, Mold Max makes several different types of silicone molding products, and this is just one of them. This is the one made to uh, pour uh, molten metal with. A lot of people will pour pewter or bismuth or any of those low temperature uh, metals. Um, I'm not sure that I would go any higher than zinc. Uh, as it is, zinc is about twice as 
high temperature as this stuff is rated for, but it still works. Now, I wouldn't go so far as doing copper or aluminum or anything like that because you're, you're pretty sure you're, you're going to burn out that mold. You may get one pour out of it, but uh, not likely to get very many. So the idea here is to get as many uh, parts made as I can uh, that'll make it more cost effective. And like I said, these are kind of going to be giveaways uh, for customers at a show. Um, I'm thinking if, you know, when they buy one of my sculptures uh, and throw this in, hey, thanks a lot. Have a coin. You know, we'll see. Otherwise, they just look cool. Now, this stuff. will set up in about three hours. Now, what I do generally is I'll pour it in the evening and I'll take it out the next day. But for, for the purposes of this video, I'm not sure it may sit in the, the mold a little bit longer. I don't know when I'm going to get around to making the second half uh, of this video. Okay, so here we are. It's all mixed up. You can see there are some bubbles coming to the surface. You can see what I said. <laughs> I mean, this stuff, it will get on everything and you will transfer it. Some other place. Yeah, I just did it again. Hopefully you don't get it on the cat or the dog or your wife's white dress. Now hopefully you'll be able to see what I and get a, a little bit better angle here. So you can see inside. I'm going to pour it, start in the corner, and then let it just slowly flow into all the places it needs to go. And we'll see how well we guessed at how much we needed. Just don't want to be in a hurry. Yeah, I think I'm going to have more than enough. I hate to mix up too much and waste it. But, like I said, in this case, if there's any left over, I just let it level out in the bottom of the cup, let it harden, and save it for later. There might be a time where you're going to come up short and that little plug will help raise the level in your mold. I wish I had two cameras going here at the same time. I know I'm probably blocking it. Well, as it turns out, I guessed pretty well. I'm not going to have a whole lot left over. And one other thing I didn't mention is that you do want to try to check the level of your work surface. Because you don't want it tilted one way or the other. Yep. Okay. 
guess pretty good for once. Okay, so like I said, that's going to take, I let it go for at least 12 hours before I try to take it out of the frame. That way it's good and hard. Now, if for some reason you don't get enough hardener in there, um, it eventually will harden. It just may take, I had one early on, I did not use enough. And it took almost uh, 36 hours for the entire thing to really set up to where I could use it. And once it did, it was fine. It just took a long time to set up. So, like I said, it's uh, better to err on too much hardener than not enough. But if you do make that mistake, uh, not all is lost. It will eventually harden up. So, we'll let this go for about 12 hours. Maybe we'll get to it in the morning, but when we do, we'll do the second half, and we'll be ready to go. Okay, so it's been about 20 hours. I didn't need to really let it sit that long, but it's the first chance I've had to come back to it. So what we need to do is take this out of the frame, and disassemble the frame and reassemble it after we prep the second half. I tell you, these Legos are the perfect thing. It gives you flexibility to make any size frame that you want. So you see what I meant when I said that the silicone will get into every tiny little crack and even between these blocks here. Um, so anyway, we need to remove the layer of non-hardening clay. Get rid of that. Okay, we're done with that. And might need a little bit of cleanup in here. A few spots that you just want to get off. area around the coin itself that is seeped in. Like I said, this is going to be a two-sided pirate coin. It looks fairly good. Okay. All right, so to get these, you just pinch these all off. Because we're going to have to put this back into another frame. We don't want these interfering with that. You can actually take your thumbnail and scratch little pieces off. Okay, so the coin and the air channel stay there. 
and we need to reassemble our frame again. Another layer. Maybe two layers. Put another layer just for good measure. Don't think I'll pour all the way up, but this will help me get to the level that I want. Okay. So there we are. We are ready to pour. Well, I said we're ready to pour, but not quite yet. All right, so the one thing about silicone, the rule, basic rule is silicone will not stick to anything except itself. So since we're going to pour a new layer of silicone in here on top of silicone, we're going to have to uh, apply a parting agent. And I like to use this regular old Vaseline with a small brush. So we're going to coat everything inside that is silicone. We don't really have to uh, coat the coin. It won't stick to that. As a matter of fact, it's probably best not to because uh, it might interfere with some of the detail. And we still have to put the second half of the coin in there too. But this way we can get all the surfaces knobs okay so that that the parting agent is in okay so I've gone ahead and put some non-hardening clay on the back side of this coin I'm going to use it as kind of an adhesive to stick to the other coin and it should seal up pretty well. Now, the other side of the coin is going to be facing up. This will be the back side, so it needs to face down. So that when you rotate it, the one, same side keeps coming up. Anyway, all coins are like that. You just have to match this up. Press it down. Make sure it meets up with the other side as best we can. There's going to be a little bit of cleanup afterwards, but I think that's going to be. good all right so now we're ready to pour all right so now that we're ready to pour we need to put our gloves back on again so let's try it this way let's get one there and we get one there and we'll 
you have to do is Okay, we're ready. All right, so we're going to repeat that procedure from the first half. Try to get this on camera as best I can. Trying to purposely come up short here so I can show adding um, a little extra cured silicone to the mix to bring that level back up just in case you do run short. So we'll have that standing by. Yeah. The biggest fear is running out of hardener because they, like I said, they don't give you a whole lot to work with. Now I am going to provide a link to a video that shows the proper way to mix this if I can find it because I am going by memory here or by experience of how much I need. said be very slowly add this to the cup because you see I already splattered a little bit this stuff is very thin very viscous and it will just go everywhere All right, so we'll mix it up for a minute or two. Okay, so we've got everything set, ready to go. I've got the part in place. The air channel is still in place and we've coated the silicone with Vaseline to use as a parting agent. And we're ready to go ahead and pour again. So let's get this done.
right, so let me show this little hack in case you, again, you come up short. Um, you can supplement your pour with a piece of silicone that was solidified from a previous pour. And go ahead and push that down in there a little bit. And cover the rest up. <clears throat> I'm pretty sure I had enough to finish this pour, but I did want to show that that is something that you can do. Like I said, this stuff is expensive, and anything you can do to save on product is a good thing. I think I did need that little piece. Okay. So, a couple little bubbles will be coming up. I'm pretty sure we don't have any up against the part itself, and that's really where it really matters. All right, so we're going to wait again for it to harden, and we'll finish up the third part, separating the two halves, cutting our little air channels in there that we need to allow the air to escape when it gets poured. It's coming along nicely, and we'll be right back. Okay, now that this is completely set up, it's time to take our frame apart and check our handiwork. Now we're getting very near to completing this and then being able to go ahead and pour will be the real proof of how well we did you know these molds it's always in the details the more time you take planning it and executing it the better it's going to be So there's our mold. We have to go ahead and clean up the outside of it. We'll do some trimming on the corners because when you pour, it'll be clamped between either a couple of pieces of wood, a couple of pieces of metal, and this little edge here, the meniscus, uh, has turned up, and that will affect the clamping device. So we'll trim that off a little bit. Okay, that's pretty clean. Let's see if we get her apart. parting gel, the Vaseline did its job, nothing stuck, so we just have to get the parts out now. There's our air channel. one half look at all that detail very nice my 
do not see any bubbles. May have to trim a little bit in here, but we'll still have to cut our air channels. Let's get the other half out. That's one thing good about silicone, it is flexible and it helps get your parts out. Okay, the side looks excellent as well. All right, so you see that the two halves are opposed. So when you turn the coin, you always have the same side facing up. And of course it mates perfectly because of these um, registration tubes or witness marks, however you want to call them. All right, so let's grab a nice sharp um, X-Acto knife and we'll go ahead and cut the grooves and the sprue and we'll be real close to pouring a piece. Alright, so I'm going to try to stay zoomed in on here so that you can see what I'm doing. Um, most efficient way for me to cut my grooves for the air channel is to come off of these little points here. Because that's where the, the bubble is going to be. And start with a really nice sharp knife and it doesn't have to be big uh, that's pretty small but that'll probably work all right so all these big points here the sprue is going to enter right here so this side needs a cut That trapped air is going to escape into our little tunnel there. Now that will produce uh, little pieces of uh, metal protruding out and part of the uh, air channel it might also fill up with zinc so all those little things they'll get cut off and then the edge of the coin will get ground and polished Okay, so you get the idea. Anyway, all the way around, all these little, on this particular piece, all these little star points on the edge of the coin is where I'm going to go ahead and cut a channel to allow that air to get out. Uh, got a little bit of cutting to do around this flange here. Okay, so it's basically done. I'll finish up, we'll cut the sprue, and get ready to make a pour. All right, so I'm gonna show, going ahead and cutting this sprue. So you see this one little point here, I'm gonna to try to make this easy when we're done pouring, and we take it out, that we don't have a whole lot of cleanup to do. So the smaller this hole that might need to be adjusted if it, we go to pour it and it doesn't uh, fill properly 
and we decide that it's because the sprue hole is too small then we can adjust it okay and you can see this is where we want our zinc to pour in in this location right here make it a little bit bigger but we're going to start off kind of small because if this fills properly that's easy to cut off all these little points around here are real easy to cut off and then it's a simple matter of just uh, grinding the edge of the coin and buffing it and we'll be done if you make too much work for yourself uh, it just takes forever to do the cleanup and just too much work I mean you'll eventually get it done but you won't enjoy it as much okay so well need to widen this out so that we create a little cup to pour okay so here you'll see half of the sprue all right, so we've got to do the other half side now. Okay, we'll do it in the same spot. Okay, well, I hope I didn't block it with my big fat head. Alright, so we can get this together. And there's our sprue. It's kind of an elongated sprue hole, but that's okay. Like I said, we have to trim these little edges here to keep it flat. Okay, and another place we have to make a cut is to, up here, we're going to let the air out to the side. Don't want it to come out the top because if I over pour, it'll block that air hole and we'll just have a bad cast. So, this way, air will escape to the sides.
All right, so you get the idea. I still got a few little cuts to make. I don't have to show every single cut. So next step, we'll take this out and we'll go ahead and make a pour.